चलो ठीक है लेट्स स्टार्ट विद दिस वन ठीक है हमें अच्छा स्टार्टिंग स्टार्टिंग विद दिस पेपर स्टार्टिंग द फर्स्ट थिंग टेल मी व्हाट्स द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द फर्स्ट आयनाइजेशन एनर्जी अच्छा इट इज द energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms to form a one mole of gaseous plus one ion okay to remove one mole of uh, electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms to form One mole of gaseous ions. Yes. Now the next part. Uh, suggest why the first ionization energy of uh, B is much less than that of A. So why is B a lot less than A? And these are successive elements in the periodic table. Which group is A in? Is it uh, group eight? Think that is exactly group eight. ठीक है दैट वन दैट वन इज डेफिनेटली ग्रुप 8 एंड सो देयर इज अ बिग डिप व्हेन यू स्टार्ट अनदर पीरियड राइट हम्म यस सो व्हाई इज व्हाई इज देयर अ लार्ज डिक्रीज व्हेन यू गो टू द नेक्स्ट पीरियड अम नेक्स्ट पीरियड ग्रुप 1 ग्रुप 1 अह I mean, let's say so this is, is it because the, uh, the distance of the electrons from the nucleus is greater. Yeah, there's an extra shell, right? So not only distance, but shielding as well. It's a same question. So, I mean, over here, if you have neon, that's uh, what is neon? Neon is uh, two and eight, right? But if you have sodium, that's uh, that's eleven uh, electrons. So that's going to be two eight one, right? So the so the distance is greater, right? So A has two reasons. A has a greater atomic radius or distance, and more shells. So hence, there's there's going to be more shielding, right? So there is going to be more shielding, and that's why. Uh, what will happen is that uh, there's going to be less attraction uh, between the nucleus and outer electron right is that clear yes as the next one there's p and t successive elements in the phd of the periodic table the letters are not the symbols of the elements On the axis, sketch a graph to show the trend of the atomic radius of the elements P to T. Explain your answer. Uh, so P to T. Uh, on the sketch a graph. Like what? What's P to T? Like just a second. So they're quite blunt about this question. They haven't given any clues. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's P. I mean, they are successive elements, right? Ah uh, yes. In period three, right? So, show the trend in the atomic radius of the elements P to T, and explain your. I mean, that's like a very general question, right? Did he mention anything about P to T? No, sir. Unless, uh, is it related to the first part? That's what I'm saying. I mean, maybe he means uh, like it's A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O. P Q. So is he is? Does he mean that alphabetically? I mean, I have no idea what he means by P to T. It could be anything, right? Could be yes, sir. So just a second, let me. Like, if if it's related to the first part, right? Then where do you think where do you think P to T would be? The so first just, one ended at F, I think. Yeah, just one second.
So this is the marking scheme for this one. So we have to look for uh, P to T. Oh, the, sorry. Uh, so is it just a decreasing line, sir? A straight decreasing line? Successive elements. Why would it be decreasing? Uh, sir, if I'm not mistaken, if you go from left oh, to sir, right... No, no, sorry, 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 sorry. I mean, the question is pretty simple. It's, uh, I thought he was talking about ionization energies. He was talking about the atomic radius. So what happens to uh -huh. the atomic radius, right? Yes, it goes down. It goes down, it decreases. Uh, why does it decrease? Uh, the atoms get smaller. But it's why? Different. Across the period, why, why do they decrease? Yes, sir. Uh, the, uh, the force of attraction from the nucleus gets stronger, is it? And why is that? When you uh, move to, you got more protons. Cells more, get closer. Yeah, but you got, basically you got more protons. Nuclear charge increases across the period. Ah, yes. While the shielding remains constant. So you, you kind of have the same shielding. So uh, stronger attraction. Between nucleus and the outer electron. Or the wheels electrons, right? So, uh, same shell, nuclear charge increasing, there's greater attraction uh, between the nucleus. Now, the next part is, uh, just one second, let me, I said, now the next part is, question number two, describe the lattice structure of carbon-60. It's an allotrope of carbon. Any idea what that is? Yes, sir, I am not familiar with the uh, allotropes. The carbon has, I mean, you, you are familiar with allotropes. Carbon has two allotropes, uh, two main allotropes. It's got diamond and. Oh, oh I see. And it's got graphite, right? Hmm, yes. But it's got some more as well. Like you've, you've got graphene, which is a single sheet of graphite. Right, is that clear? Mm, yes, sir. And structures that are very similar to graphene, they are nanotubes. It's like a sheet rolled up into a tube-like structure. And then there are full rings. And I'll show you, I'll show you. Let me just show you carbon allotropes just a second. So this is uh, kind of what uh, what carbon allotropes look like. You've got uh, graphite, you've got diamond, and then structures that are very similar to graphite. You've got graphene, that's a single sheet of graphite. You've got nanotubes, it's like a rolled up, I mean, think of a graph, graphene sheet or graphite sheet rolled up into a tube-like structure or a ball-like structure, that's a full ring, right? Is that clear? Yes. And out of all these structures, most of them are giant covalent. There's one that's not giant covalent. Which one is it? Is it graphite? No, graphite is giant covalent. It's got a lot of number of fat. It's, it's got a very high number of atoms. It's, it's this one. You will only hear this one. Uh, just a second. Let me. 
this is a limited structure. It's got a limited number of atoms, right? So, so, so this one is a molecule. The other ones are all giant. I mean, these, these structures, they are all giant structures. Is that clear? Yes. I mean, this, this, they could have unlimited length. So they're all giant, but not, uh, not full range. Full range are molecules actually. And they've got a limited number of atoms. So when he says C60, basically, C60 is, is this molecule. It's a molecule of full range, right? Hmm. So describe the lattice structure of C60. So, so that's, that's a full range. Is that clear? Yes. And describe the lattice structure. So you're going to write that it's a simple molecular. With with weak van der Waals forces, so you get let's see. Um, why why is he mentioning a simple molecular and lattice structure? So regular arrangement. So it's a solid having. So whenever you have to describe the word lattice, that means a regular arrangement of particles. Do you can remember or note this down? Whenever you have to describe the word lattice, that simply means that it's a it's a regular arrangement of particles. Is that clear? Yes. Uh, and now he's comparing it with diamond. So why doesn't diamond sublime? Because Fullerene sublime. Fullerenes are like ball-like structures. And they've got weak Van der Waals forces. So those intermolecular forces can be easily broken. But diamond has strong covalent bonds. Tiga, that's going to be, it's a giant covalent structure with many, many covalent bonds. So that's what diamond kind of looks like. Every atom will bond with other atoms and so on. So a large amount of energy is needed to break the bonds of diamond. While fullerenes have weak Van der Waals forces, so it's it's less energy is needed to break the intermolecular forces for fullerenes. Is that clear? Yes, yes. So what's a what's a hydrocarbon? So it's a compound made up of carbon and hydrogen only. So it's a compound or a molecule which only contains carbon and hydrogen atoms. Describe a test to increase, uh, to, to, how do you figure the presence of double bonds, carbon, carbon, double bonds? What's the test? That's a bromination, sir, with orange, brown, bromine, what's that? So the test is beer to aqueous, uh, room temperature, and uh, absence of light. I, so I think we had a catalyst as well. Was it a CCL4, I think? No, CCL4 was the solvent. It's either aqueous or it's CCL4 solvent. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't a catalyst. It was just a solvent. Inert solvent. So the red uh, test is red brown bromine gets decolorized, right? Is that clear? Yes. next one you've got a question at this point 144 grams of carbon 60 and it's placed in a 100 cm cube container that's full of hydrogen gas at 20 centigrade and 1 into 10 by 5 pascals the container was heated to make the carbon 60 and hydrogen gas react a reaction occurs after the reaction the container was allowed to cool to 20 the pressure decreases to so the pressure has decreased all of the c60 had named the type of reaction what type of reaction has occurred Like, how do you have an alkene reaction where hydrogen gets added? What is that reaction called? It's a hydrogenation. Tigers, this one is going to be called uh, hydrogenation.
or, or you can call it, it's an addition reaction. Okay, so it's a, it's in, and specifically it's an electrophilic addition reaction. I'll just have a check. Uh, so you just give an addition, right? So addition is the type of reaction. Remember there's three types of reactions. One is called addition. Then you've got uh, substitution. And you've got elimination reactions. The mechanisms that you studied, they all fall into one of these three types. So, so remember this, it's addition, elimination, and substitution. That's the next one. What's the next part? Calculate the amount in moles of C60. So, so find out the moles. Mass divided by molar mass, so 0.144 grams divided by the MR of C60, it's 12 into 60. So tell me how many moles do you get? So two times 10 power of negative four. So we've got two times 10 for negative four moles. Calculate the amount of moles of hydrogen gas that reacted with C60. So we need to find out the moles. Now, this is a tricky part. First thing is, I would need to find the moles of hydrogen gas that were added, added initially. So I know the volume of the container, I know the temperature of the container, and I know the pressure at which the hydrogen gas is present. So what is the formula? It's, uh, it's PV is equal to NRT. So, so what we know is we know the pressure, which is 1 times 10 power 5. We know the volume, which is uh, 100 cm cube times 10 to the power minus 6. N is the moles. R is 8.31. And the temperature is to be in Calvin's, which in this case will be 293, I think. Right? So find out... Yeah. Find out what N is. What's N? So it's a 4.11 times 10 power of negative 3. So these are the moles that were initially put into the container. And then what are the moles that are remaining? Remember, it's only there's only one gas, and that is H2. The others are solid, right, at RTP. So, so I mean, this one is a solid. Uh, this one is also a is also a solid, right? So then he says that the same after the reaction, the temperature is again twenty. The pressure has decreased to two times ten power twenty four, right? So find out the moles. into volume, which is, it's the same container. So that's uh, 100 times 10 power minus six cm cube, dm cube, meter cube now. N is moles, then you have, and then you have temperature, which is uh, again, 293. So find out what are the, what are your new moles? So this is this one is a nine point 
zero eight times ten power of negative four. I said, so you had these many moles initially, and now you've got these many moles, right? So find out the difference. That's the moles that reacted, right? Find out the moles now. That's initial. That's a, that's what's left at the end. I said 3.20 times 10 power of negative 3. Negative 3 moles, eh? So that's the amount of moles that reacted. So I'm going to, I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to, the, what was it? 3? 3.2 times 10 power negative 3. Negative 3? Yeah. So we can kind of uh, figure out. Uh, so now what we can figure out is, can you figure out the mole ratio? Like what's what's the mole ratio? Two times ten power minus four. Ratio three point two times ten power negative three. I mean, divide both sides by two times ten power minus four. <laughs> so what do we get? So on the left side, it's one. On the right side, it's uh, 16. So 60, basically. So, X, so we know that X is... Uh, X is going to be 60, right? It's one ratio 60, right? So it's going to be C60. Plus X, one ratio 60, right? So 60 H2. Uh, and so 16, so 16, one six. I see you're getting 16. And um, on the other side, it's uh, C62 X, right? So it's going to be C60. And H will be 32, right? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. T is C60. Check the color thing. Is this the answer? C60, that's, that's, the, that's the answer. T is C60, H32. That's the next one. Um, okay, silicon mina, same type of bonding as diamond. So type of bonding, that's uh, covalent. I said, make sure okay, you answer exactly what they're looking for. Tiga, what is the structure? It's a, it's a giant, giant macromolecular structure. Tiga, I guess, I guess, uh, It says two marks, so we don't need to go into the detail about showing the structure, but uh, so just covalent, covalent and giant, that's about it. As when silicon reacts with Mg2, he says that state the full electronic configuration of SF4 minus one. So how many electrons would it have? I mean, it's got 18 electrons, right? Yes. So what's going to be? It's 2s2, 2b6. 3s2. And then what? It's uh, it's going to be? Cp6. Cp6. Yeah. As the next one is that uh, write an equation to show the reaction of solid Mg2SI with dilute hydrochloric acid. TK. So Mg2SI 
with hydrochloric acid banega kya it reacts with hydrochloric acid to form sih4 and the solution of magnesium chloride mg is plus 2 cl is minus 1 so mg cl2 so the rest is you just need to balance it to kya hogi what's the balancing for this equation Yeah. Uh, put, uh, uh, put a chew in front of the MgCl2, sir. Oh. And after that. And, uh, and a four on HCO. Okay. And include state symbols. TK, make sure you read the question properly. TK, you'll be wasting marks uh, unnecessarily. He said the first one is a solid, so that's a solid. Uh, dilute hydrochloric acid, that's obviously aqueous. Gaseous SiH4, so that's a gas. And the solution of MgCl2, that's aqueous. What are the, so what's the shape of an SiH4 molecule? Is it tetrahedral, sir? Yes, so it's going to be tetra. Hedral, four bonds is always four bonds and no, no lone pairs. As I said, H4 reacts spontaneously with oxygen. So, as now we're seeing, state symbols are not required. And it produces a white solid and a colorless liquid. So, what could it be? What's a white solid and a colorless liquid? I mean, just silicon. Dioxide or silicon oxide and uh, what? Yeah, that that's that's probably the only thing that makes sense. Colorless liquid and that's a white solid. Plus, um, water is the. I mean, this is a test for water. And I just copper sulfate blue. That's a test in salt analysis for for water. TK. As the next one, question number three. This is, I guess, in calcium with nitric acid. So. So there's a lot of inorganic calcium with nitric acid. What's going to be produced? So is it calcium nitrate and hydrogen gas? Is it? As a, and and these two gas. As the next one, calcium. Metal is placed in dilute sulfuric acid reacts mm -hmm. where you'll see at first. After a short time, a crust of calcium sulfate forms on the calcium metal and the reaction stops. Some of the calcium metal and dilute sulfuric acid remain unreacted. Suggest an explanation for these observations. So, calcium with sulfuric acid, he says that the reaction remains incomplete. Do you know what the solubility of calcium sulfate is? Is it soluble or not soluble? Yeah, calcium sulfate, is it soluble? What happens to the solubility of sulfates? Only the top one is soluble. Magnesium sulfate is soluble. Down the group, calcium sulfate, strontium, barium, they become less soluble. So this is like partially soluble or not very soluble. So it's kind of... Uh, it will form a white precipitate. It's kind of a solid. Now what happens is that when you have a piece of calcium and you add it into a solution that contains sulfuric acid, immediately what will happen is that a layer will start forming on the top surface of calcium and that layer will not dissolve. That's calcium sulfate. So eventually it will coat it. And that prevents further reaction. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So there's no further reaction. The so we a protective layer prevents reaction. Uh, 
इसमें पहले की जगह ये लिख सकते कैल्शियम सल्फेट इज नॉट वेरी सॉलेबल अच्छा ड्रॉ द ड्रॉइंग क्रॉस डायग्राम ऑफ द कैटाइन दैट्स अ तो कैल आई मीन कैल्शियम सो यू कैन प्रीटी श्योर यू कैन ड्रॉ द यू कैन यू कैन ड्रॉ कैल्शियम प्लस टू एंड्स राइट ड्रॉ द डिस्प्लेड फॉर्म ऑफ द एनाइन प्रेजेंट इन कैल्शियम इथेन डायोइड इथेन डायोइड इज डिराइव्ड फ्रॉम एथेनोइक एसिड I mean, this was ethane dioic acid, right? So that means it had two carboxylic acids. It had two carbons. Eth means two carbon atoms, right? ये जो आपका eth है ना, so that means two carbon atoms. Oic acid means there's a carboxylic acid and there's a carboxylic acid on the other side as well. So acid, you know, what happens to an acid? When it reacts, it loses its H plus one, and it becomes minus one. So the two H plus one ions get lost, and they form H two gas. And your salt is going to be this thing. This ion, in that's going to be calcium ethane diiode. So the ethane diiode ion is, is this one. Is this clear? Yes. I said calcium chloride is used in an alternative of NaC. Any, what's the use for NaCl? What's the use for bleach? Oh, so is it a bleaching agent? It's. It's bleach, and that is kills bacteria. So, what did he write? Ah, uh, just bleach. That's it. And remember, this is not in our course, but he said that this thing is an alternative to this thing. So, this is in our course. I said the chloride ion. Is formed when coal anyway reacts with chlorine. Now this is again the reaction that you have inorganic. It will form NaCl plus NaCl O plus water. Do you remember this is inorganic chemistry? And it's uh, where are the notes? So remember in group seventeen, this reaction in group seventeen, the reaction is the coal in which it reacts with uh, Cl two and forms NaCl and NaClO and and water. So with coal in which this was the reaction that was happening with coal in which so you, the only thing is you just have to balance this. And so you have to write the ionic equation. So in the ionic equation, you're going to remove the spectator ions, which in this case is, it's just going to be sodium. So you're you're just going to remove sodium. Is this clear? Yes. And the oxidation number is minus one over here, and ClO three minus one. The oxidation number is this is going to be called X. This is minus two times three oxygen, and the total charge is equal to minus one, so X will come out to be equal to plus five. So Cl over here is plus five. This is known as a disproportionation reaction because the same element is getting reduced as well as oxidized. Is this part clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. अच्छा अब ये कि इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्टेट व्हाट हैपेंस टू क्लोरीन द रिएक्शन सो 
so it basically loses electrons and also gains electrons. So disproportionation happens. Now, you've got this molecular referred to two other products of the reaction of lactic acid with calcium carbonate. So he's saying that ca calcium carbonate, and this is a carboxylic acid, so it reacts with an acid. And then he says that it forms, it reacts with calcium lactate, it forms calcium lactate. That's what the question states. What are the other two products? A carbonate reacting with an acid will produce what? Salt and what? What are the other things? Carbon dioxide and water. Yeah, so it's going to produce water and carbon dioxide. As so we've, we've got this organic question now and we've got uh, the first reaction. That's uh, nucleophilic. addition. Uh, that's a cyanohydrin reaction. This is what happens with the organic chemistry. Just a second. So it's, it's this reaction in the corner, right in the corner. When you have a carbonyl C double bond O, what happens is that CN and it, CN and OH they get attached to it. You can you have to remember the conditions. It's HCN plus NACN catalyst. This is what's going to happen, and you have to remember the mechanism as well. That the mechanism is that the carbonyl is has a positive carbon. CN minus one gets attached to that carbon. And the H goes and attaches to the oxygen at the top. So it becomes a cyanohydrin. The conditions for this reaction are HCN and NACN as a catalyst, right? Is that clear? Yes, sir. And then what you do is you've got CN. CN can be turned into a carboxylic acid. What is that reaction? That That is this reaction at the bottom that a nitrile, a CN, can be turned into a carboxylic acid if you just heat it with dilute sulfuric acid. So dilute H2SO4 and reflux. This is going to be called hydrolysis. Then what is reaction number three? Reaction number three is oxidation. You had a secondary alcohol and you had a primary alcohol. So the secondary alcohol turns into a ketone. The primary alcohol turns into a carboxylic acid. So you're basically oxidizing it. So for oxidation, you just need K2Cr207 acidified and you're gonna use reflux. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, there is a reduction. The ketone turns back into an alcohol. So when you look at reduction, TK, remember there's oxidation and there's reduction. So look at this chart. An alcohol, a primary alcohol turns into an aldehyde and then turns into a carboxylic acid, whereas a secondary alcohol turns into a ketone. But if you want to go back, carboxylic acid cannot go back to an aldehyde. It can only go back to an aldehyde with LiH4. Okay, so, but a ketone can be sent back to a primary alcohol. It could be reduced if you've got NaBH4 and LiLH4. So this case, we're going to use NaBH4. We're not going to use, not LiLH4. 
because we want to keep the carboxylic acid. We don't want to get rid of the carboxylic acid. Is that part clear? Yes, sir. Remember this reduction. You're the judge of partner. I said, remember this reduction happens with either LiLH4 or NaBH4. But LiLH4 only works with carboxylic acid, while NaBH4 can work with both of them, uh, but not the carboxylic acid. It can work with aldehyde and it can work with carboxylic uh, uh, ketones as well. I said, so where's the question? I said, we did everything, identify the role of NaBH4, that's a reducing agent. Lactic acid as a chiral center state, what is meant with the term chiral. Uh, so it's a it's a carbon making four single bonds with four different. With four different. Four different groups. So we've got this final question, which uh, take a matter of time. So try sending this final question. Okay, this final question. I mean, is, is that clear? Yes, sir. Can you tell the paper? The paper, you will like a second. Paper it. Uh, March 18, question paper 2 2. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. March 18, question paper 2 2. Okay. Allah is. Allah is, sir.